Ladies and gentlemen, my name is uh, Jens Eskelund and I'm the chief representative of the AP Moller Mersk group in China. I wish first of all to thank the organizers for giving me the opportunity to attend this important uh, forum. Uh, it's a pity I'm not able to um, attend in person, uh, but I very much appreciate having been given this opportunity to discuss with you uh, our plans, our aspirations in regards to decarbonization in Mersk with, with you here. What you see here is a rendition of some of the new 12 very large new container ships running on green methanol that we're beginning to take a delivery of from 2024. And that is really what is driving our near term focus in most that we are able to source uh, adequate amounts of green fuel, green methanol for these fantastic new vessels. But a little bit about our journey in Mersk towards becoming a net zero company. We recognize in Mersk that we are part of the problem when it comes to the climate disaster that we are facing in the world today. As an industry, the logistics industry is emitting around 3.5 billion tons of CO2 uh, every year. That corresponds just from shipping to about 3% of global CO2 emissions. If shipping was a country, we would be somewhere between the sixth and the seventh largest uh, emitter of CO2. That would roughly be somewhere between uh, Japan and uh, Germany in terms of uh, emissions. Looking specifically at Maersk, we are emitting 34 million tons from our operations uh, every year. And that's on basis of, of us consuming more than 10 million tons of fuel, uh, fuel oil every year. That's quite a bit. And even though uh, shipping is perhaps the most efficient in terms of low CO2 emissions, the most efficient mode of transport per ton uh, kilometer. There's no denying that when you look at these absolute figures here, that we have a huge responsibility in terms of trying to see if we are able to reduce that number or perhaps ideally entirely em eliminate uh, emissions uh, from our industry. It's not a new uh, aspiration we have. We have continually been optimizing our operations, reducing emissions from our vessels for a very long time. I think in the period from 2008 and until 2018, we managed to reduce carbon emissions by about 47% per TEU transport. But in 2018, we also realized that there are limits to how much further we'll be able to reduce CO2 emissions by utilizing existing technology. Simply put, we would need to try and find entirely new ways of transporting goods if we if we were to drastically reduce or entirely eliminate CO2 emissions from our industry. So without knowing what a possible pathway would look like, in 2018, we put up a vision to become net zero by 2050. We have been investing very, very significant resources since then, trying to find a way that we could uh, reduce and eliminate emissions from our industry. And we have been making a lot of progress. So on basis of this progress, we were actually able later on to advance that 2050 target to a 2040 uh, target. And we believe that it will be possible uh, for us deploying all our resources and with a relentless focus on finding the right technological solutions that we will be, uh, uh, be able to become a net zero company by 2040. Now we are looking at, at very uh, various different ways to transition uh, from the use of fossil fuels uh, towards uh, green fuels. And right now we are looking at three different fuels that are in various stages of com completion. We already are using biodiesel. Methanol is a big new focus area for us. And then in the longer term, we believe that ammonia will have a promising future. Now, these three fuels that we are looking at, they are all in various stages of development and they all have their advantages and their disadvantages. In terms of solutions that we know here and now can help solve the climate problem, biodiesel is an attractive solution. It can be used as a drop-in fuel in existing vessels already today and using the existing supply chain and infrastructure. So very, very practical. There are issues, however, the availability and scalability of biodiesel is limited. And also because there is such a high demand for biodiesel, there is a certain price pressure on, on this fuel. 
Now, there are also technologies that we know can solve the climate problem and where we do actually have a somewhat mature technology, but where yet the infrastructure and fuel production uh, capabilities are not yet where they need to be. For us, methanol, green methanol holds an uh, extremely exciting future. The technology does already exist. There is already operational experience at sea and it's comparatively easy to handle. And you will be able to some extent to retrofit the existing fleet of, of vessels. Uh, there are some issues when you get to scale, it's not in the short term, but later on when you begin to to produce uh, at scale, and that is where do you get uh, sufficient biomass and where do you get the quantities of biogenic CO2 that uh, that you need. But we are off to a good start, we believe, on methanol and on basis of the partnerships we have already established, uh, we are very optimistic in regards to green methanol. In the longer term, we think or, and hope that ammonia can become uh, an additional solution alongside with the methanol. We believe that perhaps over the longer term that it could evolve as the cheapest uh, fuel and that it has a great scale uh, potential. It is also a true zero carbon fuel. However, the vessel technology is not yet ready. Uh, it's a highly toxic fuel. This is something that will take a little bit of time to, to get in order, but we're working very hard on that. I want to talk a little bit about what we are doing already now in terms of zero carbon transport and reducing CO2 emissions in supply chain. We are today actually offering a service, Merck Eco Delivery, which is based on sustainable biofuel. And that actually proves in our mind that zero carbon transport is indeed possible. Biofuels today reduce CO2 emissions by more than 80%. And we are seeing now that there is beginning to be a pickup commercially also. We shipped 62,000 FFE last year, saving 98,000 uh, uh, megatons of CO2 that year. It is very timely that we also have the Netherlands Innovation Network participating here, uh, because also when it comes to the green transition, Netherlands is a key hub uh, for Maersk. Already today, we have the largest bunkering of uh, conventional fuels in the port of Rotterdam. About 17% of our total bunkering is taking place there. But we also see the port of Rotterdam as a primary sourcing hub for renewable biodiesel in the future. And that is on basis of far-sighted uh, policies, also initiatives by the, by the Netherlands government uh, towards uh, promoting the introduction of renewable fuels. And maybe uh, since this is Netherlands and China together uh, joining here, also we would encourage that there is an exchange of best uh, practices also in this regard between China and the Netherlands. The main issue for us to begin with was that we have not been able to source uh, green methanol and we have not been able to source green methanol because no one has been able to produce it, willing to produce it because there are no, no demand. That gave us a little bit of a chicken and egg problem because no one has been, able, been willing to order ships because there was no fuel available. So we leaned out a little bit and say, OK, if the main problem here is that there's no demand, then we will go out and creating the demand by ordering vessels. And we have now 13 carbon neutral container ships on order intended to run on green methanol and, and 12 of these will be very large vessels. We'll take delivery of the first vessel in 2023 and we'll have the, the 12 large vessels coming in 24 and, and 25. And we have been fortunate that a lot of good partners have said that there is a demand now, let's work together with Merck to, to produce this fuel. And here you see an artist rendition of the, of the new vessels. And you can see it's a little bit uh, different from the conventional container vessels. These vessels here are different by design because they are intended to run on methanol, but also because we have had a very high focus on further enhancing fuel efficiency. And these here will be 20% more fuel efficient than, than the industry standard uh, due to the design. I mentioned before that we have been fortunate to establish partnerships, and we are very happy that uh, two of these partnerships are in China, one with Green Technology Bank and one with CIMC NREC. And you can see here the projection of the demand that we have in the near, near term. We need to have availability of uh, 500,000 kiloton by 2025 and 6 million ton, I mean 500 kiloton 
by 2025 and 6 million ton by 2030. That's quite a bit. But we believe it can be done. We believe that China could be a key location for us to source this fuel. China has the third largest availability of biomass. China is investing heavily in renewable electricity. And China also has mature technology to turn biomass into green methanol. And China is, as we all know, maybe a world champion in doing engineering at scale and on time. So we do believe that China holds a very, very promising future in this regard. I should mention also that green methanol has another advantage. Uh, China is today importing the vast majority of its fuel, fuel oil. Green methanol can be produced relying entirely on resources available within China, biomass and renewable uh, electricity. So this will also help China uh, reduce its dependency on energy imports. Thank you very much for your attention.